This one's a pleasant surprise. This is Blood, a originally 1997 first-person shooter on the build engine made by 3D Realms, in this case the game being made by Monolith and GT Interactive. I was planning to do a video about Blood since basically last year, ever since I really got my head around the idea of making video properly, and... Die, damn it. Okay, cool. Uh, and it just so happened this year that in May, uh, this game got re-released as a really quite cool, you know, convenience-based high-def version. In this case, the interface doesn't look like butts. You can get a clear read on what everything is meant to be doing. Um, it handles mouse look a shitload better, and it doesn't do anything to change the kind of rockety, you know, whiz-bang violence fun of it, even though normally... Uh, you'd advise against doing some of the things this lets you do, because the point is to let you play Blood again, not to present a polished first-person shooter experience. If you want to see what this looks like, look at how the sprite deforms as I look around it. The game is doing its absolute best to handle the fact that I was never really supposed to be able to look at it from this angle, but, uh, whew, yeah. Anyway. See, back in the you know, early arc of the first-person shooter as a genre, we had a couple of different uh, creative directions going on at once. On the one hand, you had id Software, who presented a really strong mechanical vision of how to make a game. They wanted to make uh, video games using a simple system that they could iterate on repeatedly, because they had access to John Carmack, and he made amazing engines that worked consistently. And so he would give them an engine, and they would fill, the game, fill that engine with levels, and the result was a game called Wolfenstein, and then another game called Doom. Neither of these games are big on what you'd consider to be like exceptions. They don't have a lot of unique objects in them. Almost all of Doom's level design is all about using the same basic techniques over and over again. Whilst uh, you've got kind of the opposite situation when it comes to later games by different developers, particularly 3D Realms, who followed up on Doom and tried to make a Doom killer called Duke Nukem 3D running on their build engine. That's this build engine. Stay down. Um, the build engine games usually ran the gamut from... Um... Actually, you know what? They didn't run the gamut. They were all bad. They, they were all bad in a way that doesn't hold up today very well at all. What they were mostly doing that separated them from... Oh, I need a key. What they did that mostly separated them from their main competition, which was Doom, uh, is they were trying to do a different kind of game. The first person shooter as a genre was largely populated with games that were trying to represent uh, something after Doom. Doom filled its levels with the kind of vague, generic feeling. It's a... Uh, it, it's a... Um, Martian base or a demonic ritual space and that's it there wasn't really a lot of attempts to represent things you didn't see a lot of chairs in doom or you know very few attempts to render toilets whereas I know from having been around at this time one of the earliest things you would see people try to make in doom wads was some replica of their house and that replica of their house would inevitably have something that was trying to be their toilet um, and you know the doom engine wasn't great for that but whatever Build is kind of building around that philosophy space where they want to make it accessible for you to make your own versions of your own, like, you know, your, your day-to-day life, day -day life. So there's a lot of stuff in Build Engine, which is trying to make things you could relate to and look at and go, oh, yeah, that's more or less right. Now, obviously, it's wrong. Like, look at this funeral home. This is, this is nonsense. Like, it's got the basic structures in that there's a place for a coffin to go and there's a place for people to sit while they mourn, but it's, what, two pews that can hold, what, maybe six people each? Um, there's a, you know, an organ up here, so the organist is completely separated from the affair. Uh, it's, it's not actually a funeral home. It's not actually a place to attend or, or relate to your dead. But it is something that looks like a funeral home, and that feels funeral homey. Uh, it's got a certain ishness to it, and that ishness is pretty much how everything in build winds up working. Alright, let's see how we can do this. Hey, got there. The idea of build games as ish means that they're trying to make do with a lot of personality to push through the worlds they're selling. 
where, where Doom kind of didn't care, and the Doom guy is mimetically nothing of a person. Uh, an effect that, by the way, when Gordon Freeman does it, is even worse. Um, the the worlds of these build engine games tend to be much more about trying to sell you the experience of being a particular kind of action hero. Duke is a classic action star. Tech War's main character is a future cop who wants to guard against future crimes of future drugs. Uh, Shadow Warrior's Lo Wang, the original one, is... awful. And in blood, you're playing Caleb. An undead cultist zombie cowboy. Don't know what I missed. Alright. Yeah, so this game is uh, a remaster of the original, and for the most part, everything I'm playing and experiencing is kind of mapping from one to the other. We're now moving into a train train yard, and like this isn't this isn't a train, right? This isn't a train carriage. This isn't actually a train track. You notice it's all just literally. It is a world of things that are painted on. You're given the impressions of things rather than shown things. And that's okay. Like, the game can only do so much. This engine was trying to make itself work on accessible hardware as well. And, you know, this is before the days of everyone having access to a 3D uh, card or a dedicated piece of hardware in their computer that just ran 3D math for them. Uh. Yeah. Um... So instead, you get a lot of, like, again, personality. And the personality you get with this one is uh, pretty unsettling, but also really weird. Um, Caleb is, we'll say it's dark humor, but it's dark humor as expressed by someone who uh, doesn't quite realize what a weird asshole they are. Uh, Kane, Caleb doesn't actually say anything super offensive or racist, as far as I remember. Like, I'm sure there's going to be some point where he says something about Native Americans, because he's a cowboy, and that's the time for these things. Um, but, it is a, uh... It, it is a game that has largely managed to avoid... Oh no. Running low on ammo. I'll get some shotgun shells back. Cool. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, what do we got? I mean, I guess the cultists might be saying something super racist, and I wouldn't know because I don't understand the language. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I I just you know did a back to back circle with that guy. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. All right, fine. Anyway, by dint of just not including a lot of the things that Duke Nukem and Shadow Warrior did, uh, can you still do this? Okay, no. It used, to, it used to be in one of these games you could just electrocute yourself by using a PowerPoint. Um, you know, that's great design, by the way, just to make it so that there's something the players can interact with that hurts them. Whoop! Man, I love how this game moves. Whoa! Awesome. Um, oh, yes. Jojo. Suddenly, my memories of this game holding up are uh, running headlong into the memory that this game goes to a circus. And that circus has Jojo the Idiot Circus Boy as a feature. You know, uh, look, these things are complicated, and we live in a society. Yeah, I knew it. Get pitchforked. But broadly speaking, uh, it's it's very much in that same space of horror movies where it's like, well, look, if... What are these is ringing? I don't remember this. Okay, so yeah, that's the kind of game we're playing here, all right? We're playing a game where you get a Simpsons joke about a, a, a prank call while you are trying to run around and shoot zombies in the face. How do you get up there? Oh, one of these is going to drop, isn't it? Yep, there you go. 
There's a secret behind it, and then another secret on top. Hey! Cool. I like that kind of design. I like I like how it feels vaguely rewarding. Ooh, ooh, you see this? This here with that with the uh, uh, bookshelf that swung apart in a circle. That was at the time something that the Quake engine had a difficult time doing. It was known as a rotating brush. Yeah, knew it. Um, it, had, it was a rotating brush, and rotating brushes were super duper difficult for a game engine to uh, pull off cleanly uh, in, in Quake. The first Quake expansion, the Scourge of Armageddon, uh, and the follow-up Dissolution of Eternity introduced rotating brush technology, and, you know, at that point, it was like, well, I guess there's no more wheelies to pop. Um, but, you know, there was for a time there something that the build engine could do that the Quake engine could not. And I have the moon key. The moon key. Is this the area with the moon key? No, this is the flame key. Alright. This puts us back to one of the, uh, her, let's say, long-standing design choices of the first-person shooter of the time, which is a lot of running around looking for the right door. Level flow wasn't something that we'd really, like, studied. Ooh. Ooh, that's cool. Literally having zombies claw their way out of the walls is neat. Yeah, okay, see, so that's a that's an example of what... You get that kind of thing in Doom a lot. Uh, uh, I believe it's often called a kill box, where there's an obvious thing you need to pick up, and you pick it up, and then the lights go out, and the walls come up, and you get monster closets. Ooh, neat. The, wall, the Guns and Kimbo thing always seems to show up at a time where it's not necessary. Hey, you. Die. Oh, I missed this spot entirely. And you see how this is definitely not an actual cafeteria in an actual railroad, but it's it's definitely a game trying its best to represent those things in a way that feels right. I sure could use a drink. Ooh. Very edgy, Caleb. And, yeah, okay, so here's an example. This pot. This pot is a piece of the map. It is not movable. It is It is just extrusion of the plane it is sitting on. But, uh, yep. Oh, hey, Cask of Amontillado joke. Yeah, see? Alright, let's let's see if that's an actual exploitable barrel. Okay, cool. No. But yeah, so someone got bricked up in here. That's neat. There's a little little cask of Amontillado joke hiding behind a fire extinguisher. Hmm, I wonder if there's a secret in this room. Hmm. Why did that change something? Hmm. Aha! Limited invisibility. Well, neat! Okay, that's cool. That's like a, a secret within a secret. Still didn't get that flame key. Here's the bookstore. Oh wait, no, I have the flame key. I, you know, I have, have the flame key and the moon key. See, that's the thing with this interface that I didn't, I'm still not used to. You notice how on the left there's three little buttons? And on the right there's another different three little buttons? Ooh. Okay, so we're going to play through this next level, and then we'll call it. <laughs> okay, so this, this, is, this is fun. I, I like this, this kind of attempted design. There's a lot of stuff this game tries to do with its very limited uh, tool set, and, and I appreciate that. So we're going to do this next one. Okay, uh, here you are. 
Hello. Large prominent crack in the wall where my dynamite goes. Ah, is this the start of the this is the start of the level? No, it's not. Another place for dynamite. And indeed, some dynamite. And the bookstore! Aha! Ha! Huh. Neat! Well, yeah, cool. I guess this is technically a secret. And I guess technically if you wanted to, you could hold off on going in there, loop around and drop on them from the top. That'll show them. All right. Anything around here? No. What about down here? Nope. Okay. Now, remember how I said this game relies on using ishness? Okay, so, behold the build engine trying to represent a uh, train in motion. Okay, so what's happening down there is these are textures that are animated to constantly be scrolling backwards. They're not moving, not really. They're just giving you the impression of moving. And that's to give you this whole thing the impression of being on the move. This is a great big map, which is all taking place on a moving train in a game engine that can't really do that. And I think that's really cool. It's a, it's a neat... It's a neat kind of uh, a hacky solution, and I love that kind of thing. The uh, the the constant attempts of, of games of this era to try and give the impressions of things and abstract them into recognizable entities, rather than necessarily trying to make sure that they could really do it. Like this, you know, these days you would get a handcrafted train level. And if it needed new physics to make it work, you'd have to do a test to see, you know, how, how cost effective is it to make it work. And if it's cost effective enough, it'd just get made. You know, just this much programmer time gets dedicated to the task. And that's, you know, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not really trying to bag on anyone who that, and that's their job or anything like that. It's just, it's a very different world to what it was here, where someone had the idea of, hey, can I make a level that's on a train? And the result is this. Now, uh, that texture down there, is doing a metric ton of damage and it's also doing a metric ton of damage that shoves you that away so if you do jump off you die and when you die you kind of just go rolling back so it still gives you that impression and i mean like you know are you really moving is kind of an arbitrary question at this point all right let's go fight some cultists on a train yeah that's right uh steven seagal reference yeah under siege 2 Man, did he become a punchline. Okay, so this this one, this, as far as design goes, I love this because, okay, you know you have to go back here because that's where that locked door is. So you know you're going to be doubling back. This gives you the easy version of this level with a very small number of encounters. But when you come back through, these doors will probably all be open and whatever's inside them will probably be doing its best to heck you up. Uh, you can break through those windows and jump out, uh, which is worth remembering. It's, it's trying to make sure you remember that this whole train is a place. I mean yep more key doors more of that same like building uh, a past building a pathway like you are working your way through a level that is going to become a different level when you come back yeesh ah all right. And now I have to start from Pitchfork, so that's fun. Well, that didn't look nearly as cool as I was hoping it would. Let me tell you, uh, melee combat is not a thing that this engine did a super good job of. Get off my train. <laughs> Though, also, note this uh, four, four holes in the wall. That's a decal. They blew our minds. 
Hey, you. There. Okay, so we have some weapons. We have something. <coughs> we're a pretty tender spot, though. Okay, we're going to have to be very, very careful with our next step. Okay, two health. Two health. <laughs> okay, so killing that zombie gave us its life essence. So that's something. You know, I got that going for me. Okay. I feel like I threw a dynamite, I, I threw a stick of di lit dynamite on a train. You should get more reaction than that. How'd that go? Sorry, I got a little quiet because I'm focusing on trying not to die. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, how are we doing? Badly, I see. Oh, nice. Of course, all, all, all what happened is all the um, all the crates burst open and the zombies inside poured forth as they're meant to do. Like that's a zombie's job in a lot of ways. Okay, did the light go off or did the light break? Okay. The light went off. Okay. Okay. 16 health. Not a comfortable number in a world with monster closets. Oh, there's a door up there. Oh, neat. Cool. Great. I love it. Thanks. Not health. Not, not like a life seed. Not like a giant pile of ammunition. Uh, night vision. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Extremely cool. Yep. All right. Yeah, there's the life seed. Okay, now suddenly I can be a lot more reckless and stupid. Which, really, that's what you're tuning in for, right? Watching watching me throwing my life at, at uh, a range of cultists. So, uh, yeah, I guess I should probably talk about that for a bit. Um, so, yeah, this game... Uh, this, this game is actually one of the first places I got the impression of what, like, outside thought cults were like. Um, now... Uh, there's also a lot of stuff that came up on like in a current affair of like dudes who ran you know, remote ranches, um, you know, full of various different devoted followers and whatnot. And there was a lot of uh, th there was a lot of stuff that kind of you know I knew of as being culty. I definitely didn't connect anything in this game with you know stuff from my life or the idea that you know I was surrounded by people who only ever saw people from the church and there was this very deliberately insular way of living. Uh, I don't like when people do stuff about cults and this is the kind of stuff they're envisioning it never really bothers me um it's when people try and do like serious cults and and want to try and talk about how oh such and such is like a cult it usually comes across as really embarrassing to me hello what do you do Ooh, reflective shots oh cool a short-term buff that i'm not going to use oh well let's go Man, I don't I do not like how this blue looks. I want a super armor. Neato. And now we double back through the level and now everything we fought or didn't kill is all waiting for us to go through it. All those doors are probably gonna be open. There's gonna be fighty times. Ooh, a dumbwaiter? Okay, so now we have a whole second story on this. One of the things I really like about this kind of game is the way to which uh, melee enemies, if they're tuned right, kind of are like... Wow. Okay, so there's our protagonist, Caleb. Check him out. Yeah. I can see why he's making Steven Seagal references. <sighs> Hello, outside. I'm doing the... I'm constantly checking the outside because I'm sure there's going to be something there. Yeah, this is definitely a thing you could put inside a train. More monster closets.
By dint of their being big and slow and dumb, the zombies kind of represent a really interesting damage sponge, especially because they're kind of deliberately navigable. You can you can herd around them, you can manipulate their position. So to an extent, when you use you when you use ammunition, a limited resource, to kill them, you are kind of making a value judgment of like, you know, dealing with this thing is dealing with this thing conveniently is this much more important than Oh. Neat. Uh, dealing with this thing conveniently is this much more important. Same thing as like, how you might notice I keep dropping to the ground and finding these rats like this. Just because there's no way a rat can ever return health or ever return health or uh, ammunition to me. So I don't think of them as a thing you can get. Hello. Woo! Kind of interesting. Aha! Uh, because I dropped down to the ground when I... Uh, when I uh, backed up there, I realized that that had geometry. That's a neat side effect. I didn't realize that that's how the... Uh, I didn't realize that's how the new engine was going to treat that. All right, what else we got over here? Okay, so there's going to be stuff in there, but it's going to damage me if I go grab it. What the hell? No. Not going to damage me. Well, I feel like a fool. All right. Let me tell you, uh, going from talking about Bloodborne to talking about this malarkey, very different beast. Very different relationship to uh, the horror content, I guess I'd say. Alright. Onward. We have the flame key. I mean, come on. What? What? What did you think I was going to do? I mean... <laughs> There you go. Oh, and hey, look, a crack in the wall. Know what those are for. The train is fine. Don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. There's definitely not going to be like a catastrophic rolling off the, off the rails because someone set off dynamite inside the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably not important. Oh, hello. Ooh, a Tommy gun. Forgot about this one. I like this game still goes by the pattern of of how these first person shooters worked. You you know, you still have the the workhorse gun you're using all the time on t on uh three. You still have the uh the the rapid fire gun that you you pull out for special occasions on four. An explosive around five or six. Oh, that does not look good sprite wise. Um. You still have an explosive that hovers around five or six. Uh, in this case, I think it's a rocket launcher. Um, you have the dynamite on six, which is, you know, which you, you can put its pipe bomb, which is the weird one. Uh, and then the weapons start to get a little fruity as it's uh, as an experimental. Why didn't I back up out the door? Yeah, I thought so. Get out of here, you jerk. I mean, there's a secret, alright. Okay, I don't advise doing things that way, but it was funny. Huh, neat. Safety clamps are in place. This switch is locked. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Safety clamps disabled. Let's do dumb stuff. Holy mackerel! That's geometry! Someone put a lot of work into that! Probably shouldn't have been in here. Probably not wise. Almost got everyone. Alright, so so now we've crashed a train. And like I said, how we're doing with ishness of everything. What's our next spot? Ah, uh, yes, the Phantom 666. Ah! Didn't realize it fell off something there. Okay, now I think we're going to start working, start our way through a cult. <gasps> oh, no. I forgot about this level. 
So this game still holds up pretty well. I'm, I'm still standing by that, in that it's, it's largely not as vile as Shadow Warrior or Duke. But, uh, whew. Stuff's about to get rough. Ah! Piss off. I remember how you use those. Still. Oh. Monkey wrestling. Possum gallo. Hmm. And now this is where you get that sort of deliberate weirdness in that, you know, the security guards are zombies, which obviously, no, but still. Um, still, there is something about this level I do genuinely like, which is, if you check this out, right? There's an actual prize in there and you can't quite get at it. Um, so if you run the game, all right? If I wanted to, I could just wander up there and hit those things with the, with the, um... Uh, pitchfork, and I probably will wind up doing it. But the game is enforceable by you choosing to stand here and do it right. Which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> and immediately I take a step forward. Okay, I don't think this gun's great for this. I mean, there's always this option. Mm, this is better than Kool -Aid. There we go. Jojo the Idiot Circus Boy. I understand this is a reference to a Chris Farley movie, but, uh, not my scene. Um, yeah, this, this mime is nothing. You, this mime exists for you to hit. Uh, this follows in the Duke Nukem tradition of the strippers, who you could tell, talk to, and they would show you their boobs, and then you could shoot them, and sometimes get ammo and power-ups out of that. Because, uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. Yeah. Damn it. Huh. This is harder than it looks. Alright. I don't actually have any... Oh, come on! I got that in! I'm feeling very hard done by. Really? Really? Right, okay, I got it in. Now I'm trying to remember what the... Do you have to get all three? Do, do you not have to get all three? Okay. Huh. You, yes, you are watching me fuck around in a very badly designed 3D Realms carnival game. Come on. Yeet. I have to hope that there's someone out there who's enjoying the tension of will he kick the head into this thing and then will he have the patience to do it another time? Oh, well, I guess that ruins that. What's even in here? Well, that's a rip. Boots are jumping. Alright, fine. Heck to that. I didn't want their stupid grapes anyway. That's uh, not how you're expected to do that. Yep, okay. Sloth the Happy Mutant. <sighs> Who said that? Was it you, Mimey? You wouldn't do that to me. Oh, I won. I won. I won. I won. I won. 
I mean, I guess to a degree, part of the fun of Caleb is he actually has a bit of a personality, even if that personality is deeply disturbing, evil, undead cowboy. Oh, flag on neat. All right. Okay, here we go. Seeing is believing. Also, don't you love the, the, the textures just slapped on the wall? Like, building a sign would actually be too much. It's a cow skull. It's a dead person. It's another dead person. Oh, okay, so they basically just put me in a monster closet. I mean, I, you know... I mean, I guess this is actually what I signed up for when I played this game. Oh, they're singing One of Us, One of Us from Freaks and Geeks. Huh. Well, you know... I got an achievement for shooting the hand. Huh. Oh. Well. Okay, so... That was deeply less worrying than I thought it would be. I, I was kind of worried I was going to see a whole bunch of awful fat jokes or something like that. You know, hell good, just dismembered corpses. I'm finally having a good time. Alright. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, man. I don't watch Chris Farley movies. Not, like, any specific objection. I've just never bothered. Hmm. Oh, well, here we go. Time. Time to turn the auto run off. <laughs> Great time for the texture to drop out. I keep having the impulse to press the reload button like that actually is a thing in this game, which it totally isn't. Cask of Amontillado, pub and grill. Yep. Alright. Okay. Okay, you know what, game? I, I was a little worried about this and I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it wound up being. You know what? Yeah, you didn't... You didn't do me too dirty on that one. I'm... I'm you know, I, I'm willing to forgive. No oh, neat. The I key. And that's probably a way of opening the exit, but that's so much less important than going and checking out the happy go pukey. A hundred cultists. That's about as many as I know. All right, all right. Oh, that's cute. So, so you see how that's that's a chunk of like build geometry that's designed to tr respond to a damage trigger on an item that it then destroys. That's cute. Not you know valuable, but you know cute. And that's the thing I really love about these build engine games at their best, in that they really do have just this non-stop kind of push to try and make things that remind you of other things, even if, like, the tools for doing so are bad. Hello. I don't know what this is for, but... Yep. Oh, yeah, this is this game's... Um, so, so... There is something of an idea of this game having fire in it, like the ability to spread fire, which was something of a holy grail of video games until I think Far Cry 2 kind of just like, did it, and, you know, good job them, that's an amazing tech demo of a game, um, anyway, man, I hope I look like I know what I'm doing and I'm not just lost, because there's one more thing I want to do at this carnival before we move on, is that, eh, that's probably the thing I unlock, but, but, let's go check out the happy go pukey, oh, I needed the eye key for this, cool, oh, well, we can all tell exactly what's going to happen here, right? 
There you go. I mean, you know, it's... who who are we kidding? Of course, it was going to do that. Uh, what about you? Okay, you're the keep out sign we passed on the way earlier. Okay, and that means the exit over here. Ooh, uh, the exit over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think I think I've done everything that you can do in the carnival. Who keeps saying that? Oh wait, this place is haunted. This place is turbo haunted. Why do I keep worrying about, you know, the entities that actually say things when, you know, it's it's quite clear that, you know, this is a hellscape from which we are never meant to escape. Okay. Now, Went through here, got the eye key. Now I have the the knife key, is it? Okay. Oh hey, a dumpster. Oh hey, a power up in a dumpster. You know, if video games did condition us throughout our lives, I would have gotten a lot more trouble of getting into dumpsters. What's up here? Oh yeah, this is the, the the last remnants of the train. Don't don't ask about the physics of how that works. The map actually might make it make clear, but I don't want to pull up the map because it's not very interesting to look to look at, look to look at. Look at it. I'm I do this stuff. I've been doing this stuff now for years. I really should be better about it. All right, well maybe if it's back over here. Sploosh. Oh hey, these horrible things. Rah! 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 Nasty little gremlins. Pandemonium and Shadow Show. I have the really nagging feeling that there's probably... Uh, nope. Uh, I have a really nagging feeling that there's probably another level with... I, I want to say there's a roller coaster level or a water park slide that follows up on this one. But you wouldn't... You wouldn't do that, would you? You wouldn't have a level at a carnival just after the level at a carnival. You'd just... You'd just do it, right? You'd just... Hello? Aha! Mm. Whoa. Alright, fine. My habit of running into explosions may possibly have gotten gone out and bitten me there. And now... Oh, yes, I remember the speedrun strat just winds up clipping through the wall to get into here. No, 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 we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this, we're just gonna get out of the water. <laughs> Whew. Do you, does anyone else hold their breath while they do that kind of thing? Oh. Okay, so uh, this is clearly the cult castle, and I think that's where we're gonna call our little playthrough of blood to an end. Um, I really like this game. Um, it's certainly one of the better 90s first person shooters that someone's tried to resuscitate. I've never played the sequel, um, but I understand that it lacks a lot of the charm because it tried to do a lot more to bring the plot forward. I think in this game's case, the fact that they didn't really know how to tell a plot with a video game was probably for the better, which means you instead just got a whole bunch of weird stuff thrown together in a giant heap. If you're looking for something that's very much on the dumb side of horror, uh, do check out Blood. Uh, it's... You know what? That's a good thing to end on. Thanks, Caleb. Bye!